Salut, aujourd'hui on est encore à l'Agence Spatiale Européenne et on va parler d'un satellite spatial. Mon premier est la fille d'Homer Simpson, mon deuxième est un 4x4 et mon tout étudie les ondes gravitationnelles. Vous avez 5 secondes pour y réfléchir. Au début du siècle dernier, Albert Einstein élabore la théorie de la relativité générale dans laquelle il expose les grandes lois qui régissent notre univers. La gravitation y prend une grande place et il avance qu'elle agit directement sur l'espace-temps. Parmi les grands phénomènes qui découlent de cette théorie, Albert Einstein parle de trous noirs, de lentilles gravitationnelles et d'ondes gravitationnelles. My name is Paul McNamara and I'm the Lisa Pathfinder Project Scientist here at the European Space Agency. Gravitational waves are ripples in the fabric of space-time. So what we mean by that is, if anything moves in the universe, it has a gravitational field. And when that gravitational field changes, it creates ripples. And these ripples are the gravitational waves. Au début des années 90, les chercheurs européens et américains veulent être en mesure de détecter les ondes gravitationnelles pour valider l'idée d'Einstein. La NASA et l'ESA se penchent donc ensemble sur les technologies nécessaires et de là naît le projet ELISA. Après plusieurs prototypes et projets, la conception de l'ESA Pathfinder, sonde unique, est lancée en 2011. So, L'ESA Pathfinder est une technologie de démonstration mission pour un futur gravitation wave detector in space. What we're actually trying to demonstrate is that we can place two objects in space such that the only forces acting on them are the forces of gravity. And when a gravitational wave passes by, the bodies move due to the gravitational wave, and we're trying to measure that motion of these bodies. So inside LISA Pathfinder, we have a gold platinum cube, and it's about four to six millimeters inside, about two inches inside, and weighing about two kilograms. And what we really want to do is we want to take this cube, we want to put it in space, such that there's no external force acting on it. Now, external forces, we mean things like the, the light from the sun. So light from the sun would push on the cube and push it away. And so to prevent that happening, we have to wrap it uh, inside a spacecraft. And so the scientific role of a spacecraft on LISA Pathfinder is to protect our little cube from the outside world. On lance LISA Pathfinder le 3 décembre 2015 depuis la base de Kourou. Après avoir fait plusieurs poussées en orbite basse terrestre pour échapper à l'attraction de la Terre, elle arrive au point de Lagrange L1. Sa mission est programmée pour durer six mois. So Lagrange points in space are very special points. They're points where if you put a body at a Lagrange point, it essentially orbits the Sun and the Earth at the same time, or the Earth and the Moon if it's an Earth-Moon Lagrange point. And that's very important to us because it's far away from the Earth. In our case, the Lagrange point number one, where Lisa Pathfinder is, is about one and a half million kilometers from the Earth, which means we're not affected by the gravitational effects of the Earth. So the Earth and the Moon system are not affecting our satellite. So that's the first reason why we go there. And the other reason is, is we have a very constant illumination from the sun. So if we were to go in an Earth orbit, we would be having eclipses. And eclipses are bad because it changes the temperature of a spacecraft. Uh, and this would create a noise for us. So we're going to the Lagrange point number one. We have a, a very constant solar illumination, which gives a constant temperature. And we're far enough away from the noisy Earth-Moon system. Earlier this year, the LIGO detectors, which is an Earth-bound gravitational wave detector, made the first direct measurement of gravitational waves. So this is roughly 100 years after Einstein first predicted gravitational waves, we made the first direct measurement, which was just simply stunning. But one thing to remember about gravitational waves are that they span an, a very large uh, spectrum, a bit like the electromagnetic spectrum where you have X-rays, visible and infrared. Gravitational waves are the same. You have high frequency gravitational waves produced by things like uh, small uh, black holes. Whereas if you go to uh, the very large events of the universe, things like the supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies, they produce gravitational waves at a much lower frequency. But from that, you cannot measure these gravitational waves on Earth, simply because the Earth itself is moving too much. There's a lot of seismic noise, there's acoustic noise, there's all these different things which are trying to conspire to prevent you from making this very, very accurate measurement. So to make the accurate measurements, to measure these low frequency gravitational waves, we have to go to space. Les premiers résultats de l'ISA Pathfinder arrivent vers la mi-juin 2016. L'ISA Pathfinder est bien plus efficace que prévu. Les deux masses embarquées ne sont influencées que par la seule gravité et ne sont perturbées par aucune force extérieure. Les scientifiques observent donc la chute libre la plus parfaite jamais créée par l'homme. So when we first turned l'ISA Pathfinder on, we were amazed at the performance. This instrument, which is a very complex piece of hardware, it worked straight out of the box. We didn't have to do anything. The scientists didn't have to get into a room and start thinking of what to do. It was just wonderful. And ever since being scientists, we're not willing just to sit there and be happy. We want to make it better. 
And what we've done over the last three or four months is we've just gradually improved. We've improved by we vent the system to space, so we take any molecules which are pinging off the surface of our little cube, we take them out to space, and that prevents, that's another force which goes away. And we've basically tweaked here and tweaked there, and we've made it better and better. The future mission, at the moment we sometimes we call it ELISA or LISA or L3, the third large class mission in ESA's science program, it is a, a gravitational wave detector. And the, the main differences here are that in LISA Pathfinder, we have two little cubes, and our two little cubes are inside one satellite. Whereas with LISA, we have the two little cubes separated in separate satellites. At the moment on Pathfinder, they're about 40 centimetres apart. On LISA, they will be anywhere between 1 and 5 million kilometres apart. Now, to put that in perspective, 5 million kilometres is about 13 times the distance to the, the Earth and the Moon. So it's a very long way. However, it's only empty space in between. So what we we'll do is we shine a laser light between the two satellites and we measure the distance between the cubes, exactly as we do in LISA Pathfinder. So LISA Pathfinder has been a phenomenal success. So as soon as we turned on the instrument, it just worked. And that is something where, even as the project scientist of the mission, even I was surprised at how well it worked. And it really has given us a confidence that we can now go forward and we can build the large space-based gravitational wave detector. At the moment, LISA Pathfinder is a primarily European mission, and it gives Europe the lead into this brand new field of science. À l'heure où nous tournons cet épisode, LISA Pathfinder est toujours opérationnelle. Comme son nom le décrit si bien, elle ouvre la voie à une meilleure compréhension de l'univers et des lois qui le régissent. Au début du siècle dernier, Albert Einstein élabore la théorie de la relativité générale dans laquelle il expose, il expose les grandes lois de, qui régissent notre univers afin de valider la théorie d'Einstein. Valider, parce que j'ai mis valider, valider l'idée. Valider l'idée d'Einstein, tu vois, c'est pas beau. Valider l'idée d'Einstein. Ouais. Valider l'idée. Au début des années 4... Au début des années... Ah, ah. Les chercheurs américains et européens ont commencé à... à faire quoi Au début des années 90, il y a des gens qui parlaient dans les couloirs. Et du coup... On a fini avec une grosse baston et ça a donné Rocky. Donc, à l'heure où nous tournons cet épisode, Lisa Pathfinder est toujours opérationnelle. Comme son nom le décrit si bien, 